What's up guys? So there's this new wireless gaming mouse from Asus called the ROG Spada. Spada? Spada? Luke, I am your Spada. Ah, got it. The ROG Spada is quite possibly one of the most beautiful mice I've seen, with enough features to make you forget all about its $160 price tag. Good lord, this mouse better be on its hands and knees by the end of this video. But you know what? Let's give it the benefit of the doubt, because who knows? There is a slight chance that this device has enough magic over the competition to justify the extreme cost. So let's take a closer look and find out if Asus delivers, or if they should consider revising their tagline. Aesthetically speaking, the mouse is just gorgeous. It's aggressive without being obnoxious, and it's got all the right curves to make me want to eye bang it all day. Despite the body's plastic construction, the overall build quality is outstanding, and there's a metal plate inside the device that makes it the heaviest mouse I've come across in ages. This is totally a preference thing, but after a week of use, I still haven't adjusted to the heft. I also tend to lift my mouse a lot when playing FPS games, for example, so the sheer weight of this thing makes it really difficult for me to game comfortably in fast-paced shooters. Fortunately, this wasn't as big an issue in other game genres. On top of weighing a metric ton, the Spada is also fitted with a larger than average body, whose shape tends to favor palm users over claw grip users. Laying my entire hand flat on a mouse has always felt anything but natural, and truth be told I've been in less awkward positions at Bandcamp, but interestingly palm use feels great with this device due to its shape and size. When resting my hand naturally, the rubberized side grips work as intended, and the outer support ledge keeps my ring finger more comfortable than when going my usual claw grip route. After a few days of use, I've completely acted acclimated as a palm rest user for the first time ever, which is pretty awesome, I just wish I could shed some of the weight to operate at 100% comfort. Or maybe I just need to do more right-handed exercises. I'll be right back. The mouse uses a laser sensor with 8200 dpi that's pretty much as precise as they come these days, and I haven't experienced any tracking issues so far. Another big selling point here is wireless flexibility without compromising on latency and battery life, and the solution Asus has implemented for this is pretty solid. The wireless receiver plugs into your PC via a USB cable and doubles as a charging dock so you can start topping off the battery the moment you go AFK. That's right, unlike this kid, the spa that rewards you for leaving it unattended. Asus doesn't list the battery life duration on their website, but then again there's almost no need. Unless you're gaming for days at a time with no sleep to recharge, you'll probably never run out of juice. At any rate, there's a battery life LED indicator on the charging dock for at a glance monitoring, as well as a micro USB port on the mouse for wired use with the included braided cable. While it's nice to have the tethered option, I found my gaming experience to be identical whether opting for wired or wireless operation. Naturally, a wireless connection is bound to introduce some latency, but in this case it goes unnoticed, just like us gamers to the female population. It is worth mentioning, however, that the mouse supports a 1000Hz pulling rate when used wirelessly and 2000Hz with a cable, but chances are you won't be able to tell the difference. In total, you get 12 programmable buttons including the left and right clicks, which use interchangeable Omron switches. Asus includes a pair of optional switches with a different click resistance that can be easily swapped after taking apart the mouse by unscrewing the base plate with the included torque screw. To be honest, the feature feels kinda gimmicky, something to hype up the feature set while simultaneously upping the price. Out of all the great gaming mice I've encountered, none of them really needed this option. They just came with good switches out of the box, which is probably what most gamers want. Between the left and right clicks, you'll find a rubberized scroll wheel with a satisfying click, and a two-level DPI button that I found to be too small and hard to find quickly enough in a heated situation. And suddenly I'm reminded of Bandcamp again. At the front edge of the mouse are two buttons that are programmed as your forward and back functions by default, which I reassigned immediately. For the amount of stretching my fingers need to do to reach these, especially the front button, they really ought to require less actuation force. Someone like the Hulk may beg to differ, but I probably won't ever use these buttons unless my fingers magically grow half an inch longer, and the day they do, you ladies know where to find me. The remaining six side buttons on the mouse are grouped together for quick thumb access, but the fact that they're all different shapes and sizes makes them seem counterintuitive. However, after a few days of in-game practice, I got fairly used to the button layout, with the exception of the undersized middle button, which is hard to click without misfiring the adjacent buttons. Another gripe I have is that the clicks here are nothing to write home about, and I mean that literally. One time I wrote my parents from college and told them how much I loved Cherry Mex brown switches. But yeah, some of the buttons here actually feel kinda stiff and could stand to be a bit less mushy. Sure, they're tolerable, but for $160, every click on this device should be thoroughly satisfying. 
Now you've probably noticed by now that the mouse features RGB lighting around the thumb buttons, scroll wheel, and the ROG logo at the back. These three lighting zones are individually programmable or can be synced to display the same effect using the ROG Armory software. There are six preset effects to choose from and they all look great in execution with seamless color cycling. Color accuracy would be perfect in fact if it weren't for the white appearing a touch too warm on the ROG logo and slightly cool on the scroll wheel. The only LED feature I was expecting to find but did not was speed adjustment, meaning you're pretty much stuck with the slow default speed of the cycling and breathing effects. I think we've reached a point in high-end RGB devices where a few preset lighting modes just doesn't cut it anymore. Give me a seizure-inducing light show until I'm foaming at the mouth and now we're getting somewhere. Within the other tabs of the software, you can also adjust power options, increase the liftoff distance, record macros, and of course remap any button on the device to whatever your heart's content. All of these settings along with your LED effects can then be assigned to one of five custom profiles. Overall, the UI has a clean presentation, the settings are easy to adjust, and the app runs smoothly from what I can tell, never stuttering, crashing, or just plain wigging out. So what does all this mean for the Spada as a whole? Well, if I'm being honest, I would consider it a good gaming mouse, and hands down the most customizable wireless mouse available. But at twice or even three times the cost of its competitors, the Spada truly needed to leave my jaw cemented to the floor in amazement, which it frankly did not do. If you happen to shit Jackson's and wipe your ass with Benjamin's, then you can buy this mouse with confidence knowing it will serve you well. But for the rest of us feeling that ramen lifestyle, the gaming peripheral market is simply too saturated with competitively priced gaming mice that granted may not have as many tricks up its sleeve, but we will happily settle for. That's all for now guys, let me know what you think of this thing in the comments and don't forget to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Before you guys go, check the description below for shirts which you can buy in my store to help support the channel and your filthy bodies. As always, thank you guys for watching, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video.